In this video, we show how to simplify the compile and load process using make. First, navigate to your PIC32 directory, take a look again at the contents, and notice that there's a skeleton directory there. So let's take a look at that one. CD skeleton, change to that directory, take a look. There's nu32.c and nu32.h. That is a library of useful functions to use with the NU32 that we'll be exploring in more detail later. In particular, in this video, we'll be using the ability to communicate back and forth between the computer and the PIC32. NU32 bootloaded.ld is a linker file that tells the linker where to put the PIC32 program in memory. But what we're most interested in right now is the make file. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to look at it with Emacs. It's another text editor. And you can see here at the top, there are five variables defined. XC32 path, harmony path, NU32 path, port, and term emulator, term emu. And for you, these are going to be blank. So after the equal signs, there will be nothing. So what you need to do is fill in the proper values for you. So for instance, my XC32GCC that was installed by a microchip lives in this directory. And Harmony lives in this directory. And my home directory for all of my PIC32 programs is called Users Kevin PIC32. The port that I get to communicate with my PIC32 is this one, as we discovered in the last video. And I'll be using screen as my terminal emulator that allows me to talk back and forth to the, the PIC32. So Linux users and Mac users are likely to use screen there. So put in the proper values for you here, and then exit that file. Now we're going to go back up one directory, back to our PIC32 directory. And we're going to create a new directory called Talking Pick. And Talking Pick is going to hold our next project. I want to copy the contents of the skeleton directory to Talking Pick. Now, once you've made that change to the make file in the skeleton directory, you want to copy that same make file to all your new projects in the future. So I'm going to copy all of the contents of skeleton to the new directory talking pick. And if I take a look at talking pick, now I can see those files in that directory. The other thing I want to do is I want to copy talking pick.c from this pick32 directory to the new project directory talking pick. So I'll copy talking pick.c to talking pick the directory. Now I'm going to change to that directory. Take again a look at the contents. I can see the make file, the NU32 library, the linker script, and the source code file talkingpick.c. Now once I'm there, I can use the simple command make. And it does the compiling and linking and turning into an executable for me. So I don't have to type in those long commands like I did in the last video. So now all I have to do is put my PIC32 in bootloader receive mode. Remember, you press the, the reset button, the user button, then let go of the reset button. Now the PIC32 is ready to receive a new program. And then I just type make write. And it sends the program over. So now my PIC is reprogrammed. I'm ready to communicate with it. And to do that, I'll invoke my terminal emulator by typing make screen. Again, making use of the make command. And now anything I type, once I press enter, uh, the PIC32 will send it back to me. So when I press enter, the, the string goes over to the PIC32, and then the PIC32 sends it right back, and it displays on my terminal emulator. So to get out of the screen program, I press Control A, then K for kill, then Y for really kill it. And I'm back now in my talking pick directory. So now in the future, if I ever am creating a new project, I'll just go back up to my pick 32 directory. That's my main home directory. I'll create a new directory called, say, new project. I'll copy the contents 
of skeleton, the skeleton directory, into new project. Then I can go into that new project directory and create my .c source file code for my new project. What the makefile does is it looks for all C files in this directory. It compiles all of them and links them and makes one executable. And it makes our life simple. Once you've got this working, you, you have a very efficient workflow to create new projects.